I hope you like what you see because this is a special video just for you. I got to thinking about it this morning and it started like this. I hope you can see everything. I've got a lot of stuff on the table, a lot to cover. Get yourself something to drink now because this is gonna take a while. But I'm hoping it's good enough to hold your attention throughout the video. I don't have a special pattern with which I'm showing these things. It's just I'll pick them up one at a time, describe them and try to give you whatever little story might be behind them. Now, I think I'll start with the American Classic Tea, Charleston Tea Plantation. This is what it looked like, a cellophane covering, so it's kind of hard to see. But, oh, this was probably 10 years ago. I was in Charleston with my friend, and one of the places we wanted to go was the uh, Charleston Tea Plantation. We did, we got to tour it, we got to watch how they made their tea and everything. And I could read to you some of what it says about the plantation. It says, over 100 years ago, tea planters brought their finest ancestral tea bushes from China and India to Guatemala Island near the historic old city of Charleston, South Carolina. Uh, let's see what else. Now the direct descendants of the very plant have been, uh, it's hard to read, have been lovingly restored to their former grandeur here at the Charleston Tea Plantation. A lush subtropical tea farm. It was a very enjoyable tour of the farm. And of course, I came back with my tea bags from the American Classic Tea. So I wanted to show you that first. The next thing I wanted to show you is this. Now, I'm not sure. It, it's, it hasn't been cleaned. I'm not sure exactly what it is. Some of you may be able to identify it, but to me, it looks like a tea strainer, or maybe you laid your tea bag right on this and the drippings went into your saucer. So if you know what it is and it's not a tea strainer, I would like to know, but makes no difference. I like it, I'll keep it. <clears throat> Something I wanna tell you about, and I remember this, many of you will remember too. When your parents finished their dinner at night and they settled in, they usually had a cup of coffee or it could have been a cup of hot tea. Now, I can remember my mother coming from the kitchen and she would be, have a little dish about this size. I used this one cause it seemed the right size, was a saucer. They had what they called a deep saucer. I don't think that was the name, but that's what I'm calling it. You can see this is a little deeper than your regular saucer would be. To cool the tea or the coffee, they poured a little bit of it into this bowl and they would blow it and they would sip that's how they would sip their tea or their coffee. Some of you may not know that, 
I can remember my mother having the size saucer. It, I don't know exactly what they called it, but it was for sipping the hot coffee and the hot tea. So I wanted to show you that first. Now the order of what I'm going to show you here, I didn't know I had this many teapots. But I said, you know, women I've always loved teapots. Old, new, little, big, didn't matter what. So I'm going to start off with the time I went to England, my first trip to England. We were on a, a land tour and we were in Wales. Went in this nice little antique shop. Now, my purpose was to take home uh, something old from England. It didn't really matter what it was as long as I liked it and I could afford it. So, my sister and I, we wandered through the little antique shop. And this is what I came up with. I want you to look this. It's platinum. It's on the side. You can see. See how it's made. See the lid. Square. Rectangle shape, actually. Now, I treasure. I treasure this teapot because I was able to buy it in Wales. And Wales is where my dad's ancestors were from. That makes it even more special. So I wanted to show that to you first. I was carrying a camera case. You know the kind, the big one that you had to hold up and strap around your neck. I had the camera case. And on the coach, this teapot stayed in that camera case for protection. I was very careful about carrying the, my new teapot on the coach. That's the story about that teapot. And it's a beauty. Now let's go back. <clears throat> I received a set of Fiesta dishes when I was married in 1954. These are the original set. I didn't have a lot of pieces. A place setting, platter, sugar creamer, vegetable bowls, and the eight plates and cereal bowl, and the salad plates. That's what I had. The basic colors I had were rose, yellow, turquoise blue, and the lime green. They call it uh, chartreuse, but I call it lime green, my favorite color. Those were the basic colors, but I had some pieces and had platter and gray. I had the... Uh, sugar bowl and hunter green and the covered vegetable bowl and hunter green and those are the ones that just come to mind. Well, I'm going to tell you about this little teapot. It was not among the original dishes I had. I was living in Tennessee. A friend of mine that I worked with had just moved into a new townhouse almost almost to Knoxville. She said, Pat, I want you to come over and see my new house and I want you to help me hang my pictures. Sure, she knew I liked to decorate. That was gonna be fun, hanging pictures in her townhouse. It was a good sized house. And when I got there, I thought, Probably a dozen pictures, you know. I've got more than that in this room. Okay, I'd be glad to help her decide where to hang her pictures. But what I discovered wasn't just a few pictures. 
There must have been 35 or 40 pictures. We started putting nails in the wall. Of course, we had a stud finder. Yes, we found the stud, but we hung it over here. The stud wasn't where we wanted the picture to be. So quite often we, but anyway, we still wanted to make sure we knew where the stud was, because you know, that's important when you're hanging heavy items on the wall. Okay, we started at five in the evening. At 1 a.m., I was still hammering hooks and nails into the wall. I said, I've got to go home. Not till we get them all hung. So we got them all hung. Uh, several days later, she decided to invite the office staff. Oh, probably 30 or 40 people. They didn't all go. But she wanted them to come see her new townhouse. And it was worth going to see. And I was there too. So while she was taking them through the house, I was in the kitchen. I don't know why I was in the kitchen, but I looked over on the stove and this is what I saw sitting on a back burner. Oh my gosh, she got the feet rose Fiesta wear small teapot, the other sizes. This is a small one. This one was made or produced in 1937. Oh, I looked at that teapot and I thought, oh, I'd give anything to have that. Well, she came in the kitchen. She saw me standing there and I picked it up and I said, do you have other pieces of this? And she said, no. I said, is this teapot special to you? No. Well, I'm going to ask you if you ever decide to part with it and want to sell it, I'll buy it from you. She picked up the teapot and said, here, take it home with you. Now, I just got through looking up on the internet, spotted this same teapot. You can buy it for $300, but mine's not for sale. Oh, I love my little rose teapot. And I love the lady that gave it to me. She was the most delightful person to work with. She had more wonderful story to tell and she traveled a lot. And each time she would travel, she traveled with what's called Elder Hostel. I know some of you are familiar with that organization. It's the elderly who take trip together as a group. They, uh, have classes, they study things, they learn how to make things. And the last story I remember her telling me was her trip to Washington, D.C. And what do you think they studied there? Gargoyles. Well, what did I care about gargoyles? They're just big, ugly looking creatures on the corners of old stone buildings. They had some in Washington, they have them in New York City, but you go overseas and you're gonna see a lot of gargoyles. She told me the history of them. She told me about the, showed me pictures, and she told me about how they came to be what they represented, and you know what? I suddenly took an interest in gargoyles. I never thought that would happen, but it's a very interesting subject if you're looking for something to study and learn about. 
and you might can lead a conversation one day about something that other people don't know. Now, that's my story about my little rose fiesta wear teapot. And so that you'll know, right on the bottom, now I'm not close enough to the camera, but if you zoom, you might can see the word fiesta. It's embossed in the bottom. Fiesta then began with the capital letter F. You could always identify the old from what they call the new by the label on the bottom of the dish or the pot. So that's two teapots for you. Oh, let's go to the next one. Ah, this one is a medium size and it's got the lip on it. You, when you see this, you know that it's holding back ice. Got ice in the pot. Maybe tea, whatever you want, but this is a teapot. So this is the medium, the yellow. It too was produced in 1937. Wouldn't take anything for my fiesta wear. All right, now let's see what we want to look at next. Um, let's go with my independence iron stone. I talk about it a lot. I use it a lot. It's the biggest collection I have. I started my, my independent iron stone collection with the white pattern. They're all different colors and designs in this pattern. But the original was the white. It's the most usable because you you it's so versatile you can match it up with all of your colors for instance this is the pink cup you put that pink cup in a white saucer and there are other little pink print edge plates and saucers and you've got a beautiful table arrangement this is the only teapot to the Independence Ironstone. This pattern has 49 individual pieces. You see the cup, you saw the saucer. This is the teapot. Oh, look what I have here the little Demitasse cup and saucer. Another piece, and guess what? I've got a little dinner bell here. Now these are just a few of the pieces I'm showing you in my independence because there are uh, better pictures. There's the biggest terrine I've ever seen. I've got two of them. They're up on a shelf near the ceiling, too high for me to reach. And they're probably still gonna be there when I move out of this apartment because I can't reach them. But they're pretty and you would like them. Now that's a few pieces. I'm gonna have to move these things around so I can show you some other things. That's all I'm gonna tell you about independent iron stone, but it's a pattern that's worth collecting. Oh, and I also have a table um, cigarette lighter that goes with this. Not many china patterns have cigarette lighters. Now, <clears throat> I was showing you the little saucer. This is Blue Garland, Havlin Blue Garland. I know many of your uh, familiar with this, 
but here's the teapot. Isn't that a beauty? Oh my. I really love the teapot. Blue Garland by Haviland. So, on we go. How about this one? Oh, it has a little cream and sugar. It also has some little um, butter pats. And I forgot what else. But you see this pretty little teapot? I bought this from a friend about, oh, 35 years ago. She had a small boutique and the prettiest things. I wanted everything that I saw when I went in her shop. And I could never walk out the door without buying something. This is one of the things I bought from her was this small teapot the little cream and sugar. See how pretty that is? As you can see. And the other pieces are in the china cabinet. All right. I'm getting a little crowded here on the front side. I'm gonna have to move things around a little bit. Look at this one. I always wanted to serve tea for each person to have their own individual teapot. I wanted them to be able to pour their own tea and this is their teapot. If they'd had six or eight of these, I probably would have bought all of them because it's such a pretty little teapot. And I said, that's just one of those things women dream about is serving tea and knowing this is my teapot. Nobody else is gonna share it with me. Okay, I'll put this back over here in a corner somewhere. All right, let's go with this one. This is the only one I can consider a Goodwill. It wasn't that I was that crazy about it. Let's see what it says on the bottom. Got a bunch of numbers. I don't know, doesn't matter. But I liked it, and it didn't cost much. This is one of those things you pay three or four dollars for, and that's the reason you buy it, is because the price is right. So I'm gonna put it aside because it was the only one of my teapot that's from Goodwill. Let's go to Home Goods. We can't leave out Home Goods. For two or three years there, I couldn't go in home goods without coming out with something. And this is another. This is a home goods teapot. It's got little chickens and roosters on it. Oh yes, you know, you can look around my dining area and my kitchen, you're gonna see chickens and roosters. So naturally I had to buy it. It's very pretty. And it also had a couple of cups and saucers. This is the cup. So that you can see it was a set. The next <clears throat> Goodwill, not Goodwill, Home Goods. Of course, I needed a Christmas teapot. Well, I didn't plan on using it, but it's pretty nice to have sitting on your dining table and I have taken pictures with this. You can see it's got the pretty poinsettia on the side and I've got little bowls that match it and plates. 
You can't have one piece without buying the matching pieces. Um, goodness gracious, who wants to do that? So this is another of my home goods. Now, you've seen this one just a few days ago. This was in my St. Patrick's Day video of my dining table. It is so feminine, so pretty, so dainty. It looked at me and said, take me home with you. And it didn't have to ask twice. So, still got the scotch tape on it. Because I haven't even taken the lid. The lid is on firm. So, that way I won't be breaking it while I'm moving it around. But you'll have to admit with pretty white cups. See, you can match up so many things this way and you can go from day to day. And I'm going around to the other side of the table. I'm not finished. So, we'll see what happens when we get on that side of the table. If I can get there, I've got everything so cluttered, I can't get through the room. And I have to be careful, you already know that. And I'm gonna turn my camera a little bit and see if I can't get a good view of, uh, let's see. Let's see if I need to get me in there. Pull my chair up and see what happens. Cause you might as well look at me too. Cause I'm on the colorful side. Little bit more. Now I love these things. You're gonna like them too. Let's start with this teapot. Now, if you like antiques and you go through antique shop, you've seen this teapot. In fact, on one of my trips to England, when I got to go visit an English cottage and have tea, the hostess came out with a teapot, with a cozy. This is a cozy. See that? It's lined with felt. You can remove that. This is your lid. This is an old. I am guessing let me see what it says on the bottom. Foreman Family Incorporated, the Hall China. Hall China, you're familiar with Hall China. Lots of ball pictures and things like that. People collect ball China, Hall China. Said the wrong thing. But I will tell you this, I tried this once with hot tea, and honestly, that cozy keeps your tea hot. I was surprised, I just thought it was more for looks than anything else, but no, it has that felt lining, and it will keep your tea good and hot. And I've never used it, but I've always wanted to use it to serve tea to a group of ladies. All right, let's move on to the Jewel Tea Company. Yes, you know what I'm talking about. Your mother bought things from Jewel Tea Man. He knocked on the door about once a month. 
and you said and look you looked at the um different you had vanilla flavorings and all that stuff oh mama just loved stuff like that that's one thing he could count on her buying but he always had a new product with the jewel tea dishes the china this was my mother's jewel tea teapot it's a lid and here is your strainer for your tea you put loose tea in there your water of course in the pot and this is the autumn leaf teapot now i'm guessing my mother bought this in the early to mid 40s because i remember sitting in the kitchen and watching the man displaying his goods and mama picking out the things that she wanted to order she had the teapot she had the pie plate oh and one thing she had jan has this hanging in her kitchen it's a coffee dispenser it hangs on the wall big round coffee dispenser put your coffee loose coffee in there put your coffee pot up under it and there's a little lever that you could pull it this way and it released enough coffee for one cup pushed it back the other way coffee for two cups and you did that till you got what you wanted in your coffee pot i loved that coffee dispenser and it had the tulip design where this is the uh, autumn leaf design when i say the tulip design this is what i'm talking about this is pretty can you see the tulips on the side now this is not just a teapot i didn't think it was i looked on the bottom and it says dripolator that's what i thought yes it used to have a glass section on the top and this was your dripolator for your coffee and it's a beautiful beautiful pattern and i'm so glad i have this this is another item from the jewel tea company those are the two i have from there and by the way uh, i found my fostoria candle holders after I did my video on St. Patrick's Day, so I did some photographs and used the Fostoria. Now, I'm coming to, where did this go? I can't, I can't find what this goes to. Let's see. Here it is. It's the lid to that coffee pot teapot. I call it coffee pot. It's a teapot. Okay. I hope you're enjoying this because some of these pieces are vintage and even if they're not I wouldn't have them if I didn't think they were worth keeping. This is the one that will probably interest you. You see these red pieces? Take a close look. I've got a whole cabinet of this. Yeah. One of those days, you know, I walked into an antique shop and there was a pretty little teapot. Looked like a tomato. I kind of liked it. It also had a cream and sugar, which is over in my cabinet. My little tomato pattern. All right. 
I looked on the bottom, made in Japan. This is from your Occupied Japan, uh, I forgot what it's called. See, I'm losing my memory. Let me read on the bottom. It'll come to me, I can't even read. I'm looking upside down, that makes a difference, you know. Marahan. This is a Marahan. Occupied Japan. Now this was the first piece I bought with the cream and sugar. And I found a couple more pieces after that. And this has been a long time ago. I was in Knoxville with Jan and her husband. We're going through a big antique mall. And I looked across the room on a table. I spotted a little teapot. You know, I believe that that occupied Japan pattern. I thought the only pattern was tomato, but look what I found. When I walked over and picked it up, and there it was. I looked on the bottom. Yes, occupied Japan. There was my little apple. They make this in an apple pattern. And yes, they did. I've got cream and sugar. I can't remember the diff. Oh, here's, here's the one. Oh, this isn't. you like this. You've seen these before. Take the lid off. This is also the apple pattern. Take the lid off. And what do you have? You've got a sugar bowl. And here's your creamer. This little set. I was tickled pink when I found this. So there was my second piece in the apple pattern. Now some of the thin pieces come with little trays, little green dish like this. This probably had a, a, a grease holder. Just a round tomato set on this little platter. But I want to show you this. Take a close look. Can you see? I don't know where I can put it that it shows up. Maybe right there. Yeah. See the handle? The little red tomato on the handle. I saw that lying on the table and I said, that belongs with the Occupied Japan pattern. It has to. I was in Nashville, Tennessee when I found this little knife. Later, I found a fork. Look at the little fork. Isn't that cute? I don't know what it's for, used for. But I don't care what it's used for. It's also got the little, it's got the strawberry. You didn't know they made it in strawberry pattern, did you? They did. There's my strawberry fork. And I found this in the state of Michigan. Go from Michigan to Tennessee. Mm, means I've been doing a lot of looking. But I was just tickled pink to find something delicate and simple like this. So pretty. But the teapot, the big teapot, uh-oh. Take a look, folks. Dusty, I haven't cleaned it. Take a look at my tomato pattern. See this teapot? Isn't it a beauty? You have to admit it is. And I ended up with <clears throat> 24 
little red juice glasses to go with it. Well, they didn't come together. But little by little, I found the glasses. And I was getting to where I had too many, didn't have space for them. So I sold a few of them in Jan's antique booth. I, just, I think I kept 10 of them. That's, a, that's enough. I'm not going to be using them anyway. But you see what you get when you've got something like this. These are all teapots. And I'm sure there are one or two more around somewhere. I just haven't picked it up yet. But there's even this one. I think this is pewter. You can see it through my flower, see the handle. And then here's the spout. There's your spout. But I wouldn't be serving anything in this one. I use it for decoration. It comes in handy sometimes when you need it a small flower arrangement. So I like my pewter teapot. And I don't have anything in silver. It's pretty expensive. So I stick to my budget when it comes to buying antiques. Now I think I've covered the things I wanted you to know, especially about the uh, cup and saucer. Since I don't have any teacup that match this little dish, I just picked up another cup out of my cabinet. Pretty little gray. It's very pretty, very elegant with the dishes. But you see, you know what I mean when I say they poured the coffee into the bowl. They put the bowl up to their mouth. They lifted it to their mouth and they sipped their coffee from the saucer, not the teacup. That goes back to the 1940s and I'm sure it's something that was done many years before that. So for the younger people who aren't aware of the times and the way people lived, their habits, and all about your beautiful china, your silver. What could you have more memorable to give you a history of your parents and your grandparents? You can look at their dishes you can look at their pots and pans. Look at their utensils in the kitchen. Those old utensils are wonderful. And you're getting the history of your parents and your grandparents. Now, if I've overlooked anything, I don't know what it is, but Jan called me before I started this She's still in South Carolina, and you know what she's doing. She's going to the thrift shops, and she's already having good luck. That I'm glad of. She's gone that far from home, and she's finding some nice little things to bring back. Of course, she's planning to sell these things in her uh, antique mall, in her booth. And she's so far having good luck. When she's having good luck, she's happy, I'm happy, everybody's happy. So I hope you have enjoyed this segment. I don't know anything else I can tell you about teapots. But that little red one over there, the little Fiesta one, it's worth $300. Not for sale. And so is the yellow one. I looked it up on the internet to see what it sells for. 
No, those are my treasures. Those are the things I enjoy and have enjoyed for years. And I hope if you have a hobby or you like to collect things, collect things that you can use, things that you can show off and have fun with. And when you pack them away and you get them out again, it's just like a new find to you when you can open up a box and say, I forgot all about having this. And the next thing you know, it's sitting on the table. So, that's my story for today. I hope you like it. Let me know if you did and if you have any questions. Thank you for watching me.